Hi, Rich from Mustang Zephyr. Today, Mark and I are going to show you how to install our new MTF independent front suspension. What we're going to show you first is the full subframe assembly that we make, and then the separate piece, so that if you're going to put this in your existing frame rails, you can. So what we're going to do today is the exact same thing we have here, but it's just in pieces. So now we're going to move over here and show you how to put it in. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to show you how to measure this. First, you want to start off with this oval hole in the back and put a line at the very front of it, as I have. And then you want to measure 14 inches forward and put a line on the frame rail, as we have. At the top of the line, very edge of the frame rail, you want to put a notch, and that will reflect onto the other side as well. Okay, now we're going to show you how we got this part here cut out, but we left the other side over there. Now, on the other side, when we cut it, we're going to leave this lip up a little bit higher and roll that in so that this gap's going to be a little bit, uh, a little tighter than what we got here right now. But this will work, but we are going to weld this completely up, then we'll grind it. Now we're going to show you what the uh, upper bracket looks like with the notch in it. And with this notch in it right there also. So this is going to go right up here. And see how those two line up? That's exactly what we want right there. Now we're going to go back over here on the right side and get you some measurements and show you where the cradle's at. This is just a double check to make sure you have all your measurements square and in there right before you weld it. Um, after you get it all clamped and it's not going to move on you, this measurement should be exactly from the back of the tube to your line, 12 inches. And then you could proceed to weld it in. Okay, now what we're going to show you is make sure before you put one of these cradles in that you always leave this radar support in first. Uh, if you've got new frame rails that you're putting in, make sure this is in. If you've got your existing ones, you're going to use your old frame rails make sure you don't cut this out. Just leave that in, because what that's going to do is going to keep everything nice and straight and true. Otherwise, these frame rails will get enough heat on them where they're going to move on you. So just always make sure this is in. So right now, we're going to show you what we did over here on this side, how we've cut this. And Mark's going to explain how he did this. And then we're going to weld it up. As we did, as we cut this flat with the level of the top of the frame rail all the way through. And then uh, I cut an eighth of an inch off of this outside layer so it will roll up underneath the top layer and then we could weld it and it'll be strong. As you can see, I run a small weld and then I'll tap the top layer down to the next layer to make it tight so it prevents from a lot of burn through from this thin cord metal. And it is thin. As you can see, we've already got our welding and our grinding done, and now we're going to mount the upper A-arm and shock mount. And we'll line up uh, the notches, notch to notch. We'll put a uh, clamp on here and get this thing clamped in place. And we want to obtain a measurement of 31 and a half from side to side of the inside of this. So here we are, we're at 31 and a half, give or take, possibly a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch. And make sure that you always have the notches lined up before welding. Right over here. So get a shot of that, so you can see how those two notches line up. That's what you want before you start welding. Okay, now we've got the upper A-arm mount welded in, so we're going to show you what that looks like. As you can see, we finished welding it inside here, here, did our plug welds, welded this in here, right in through here, at the correct measurement of 31 and a half. And after we got that all welded in place, we went straight into the sway bar, uh, tacking the sway bar mount in place at four and a half inches from the front edge of the tubing to the front edge of here would be four and a half inches. Uh, which gives you the exact correct measurement that is needed for sway bar in clearance. 
so to we got the a, spring. We got about a quarter inch gap in there. We're just showing you two paint sticks, so you just want to make sure that that you get this bracket welded where it needs to be. You don't want it back any further, otherwise you're going to get into your springs. And with our new uh, new design of the upper A arm uh, bracket, we also decided to use a swedge nut for locking over a poly nut, which has uh, more than likely a, a great failure rate to come loose over a swedge nut. Now you can use the poly nuts on the shocks, and you can use them on the sway bar, but we just wouldn't use it up here okay, on the Now that we showed you the measurements on the sway bar bracket, we just wanted to show you our jack pad and why you want to make sure you have the measurements right for this, not only for the sway bar, but for the jack pad. So if you see, uh, we're butted right up against it, and then you look to the front up here, you'll see that's where that's coming out even. So that's one of the reasons why you want to make sure the sway bar brackets are four and a half inches so that everything fits in here. Now you don't have to use this if you don't want to. You can still use your factory ones if you like. This one is just easier to work with because it allows you to jack the car up without crushing the bottom of your radio support. It has the tie down hooks in it so if you're transporting and hauling the cars like we do a lot of, uh, it's just very handy. So we use it on basically everything we build in here. Now we're going to show you the difference of uh, what we improved or changed on ours. This was the original design that we were using with the slots and that's that's where the bolts came down from the top and that's how you adjusted your, your A-arm. Uh, so we've changed that. We've also changed this part right through here so that we're not just bolting this uh, upper shock bracket on there. And if you can see, that's just bolted in. And really, that only has a half inch of thread. So really, that, and between that washer and a half inch of threads, that's really the only strength that you had to hold those things on. So what we did was we had the bolts coming back through this way and then that allows you to use regular alignment shims. Now this is also quarter inch form steel plus we've added another three sixteenths on the back side of this so we've really made this thing really really strong and by adding that extra three sixteenths that also cuts down on the amount of shims that you will use so instead of having up to a half inch of sh body shims or alignment shims now you're going to have minimal amount in there. Then the other thing we did even in this area here where the shock actually bolts into this is a quarter inch versus Three sixteenths, so you can see the you can see the difference between the two. And the other thing is, this is boxed in at the top, so we've got thicker metal. It's completely boxed in. This isn't going to move. Uh, this here, there's nothing across the top here, so this thing could move very easily under stress and strain. So that was a that was the main thing that we changed right there. And then plus also just trying to figure out where your brake line bracket goes. It's already pre welded on there for you. So it, what it does, it just speeds up your installation quite a bit. And it also it helps with uh, the uh, correct uh, radius around the front of the shock with the brake line to where it don't get into anything as you turn the wheel. Yeah, you can see how nice that brake line fits in there compared to a lot of these kits that you got. You've got an extra six, seven, eight inches and it's all coiled around, looks like a snake. Uh, this is just neat and clean the way we've got this set up like this. Okay, here we have a few last uh, last minute tips and tricks uh, of putting this front front uh, cradle assembly in. We'll start with a small tip right here on these uh, on these Mustang two racks that we get. We have to trim a uh, an inch off the inner tie rod end so we can get the correct toe in from side to side. And um, let's let's uh, recap on a couple measurements real quick. There's only three three main ones we need to worry about. The first one is the 12 inches from the front edge of the uh, datum hole right to the back of the tubing. Right there. And then we go to the front edge of the tubing, here. four and a half inches to the front edge or the back edge of the uh, sway bar mount. Right there. And then we go to the 31 and a half inches from the top edge of here to the top edge of that one over there. And that's about it. And it's just that simple.